Hey guys, this is Steel Kid Gaming here, back with another scripting tutorial. And today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make this keystroke sort of GUI on this top uh, right over here. Let's get started. Now, you've probably seen these keystrokes in other video games, um, or I guess in places such as Bad Lion or Lunar Client, if you are a Minecraft player. And um, yeah, if you wanted to, I guess, Put this into Roblox somehow. Well, this is the video for you. <laughs> but yeah, um, without further ado, let's just get started. Now, um, actually, before I do show you what I'm about to do here, as you can see already, things are pretty complicated. So, of course, um, this is a little advanced. If you don't know a little bit about scripting, then I wouldn't recommend this video right away. Maybe watch a couple just before this one just so you can understand the concept a little better and so that you're not just copy and pasting everything without not without knowing you know what the heck you're doing <laughs> but yeah if you are a l at least a little experienced then uh, yeah let's let's begin now before I actually go into the scripting I just want to go and cover this GUI really quick first thing I had a screen GUI of course in starter GUI so that the player has it then a frame uh, named keystrokes uh, with position 0 0.98 and 0 0.02. Now the reason why it's not 1 and 0 is because that would be in the very top right and usually there's some, I don't know, those three dots for the leaderboards and stuff. Um, maybe there's this top little bar right here. It's just for convenience. Of course you can edit this however you like. In terms of size, I put X to 0 0.12 and Y to 0 0.2 just so that it doesn't cover up all of the screen. That being said, I also put anchor point to 1, 0, so that when I actually have the position like this, it's not out of the, uh, sorry, out of the screen. And of course, background transparency to 1. Then, for each of these, I put, um, I tried, sorry, I put the size as 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. The reason why I didn't do 0 0.33 is that I want these small little gaps in the middle, just makes them distinguish the buttons a little better. Along with that, um, I have a position um, for them accordingly. Now for every single one of these, the position will be the same as anchor point. As you can see, X is 1, Y is 1. And anchor point, it's of course X is 1, Y is 1. If you don't know what anchor point is, it's just um, where the position is based off of. So if this is 1, 1, that's be that means it's, I believe, down here, I think. But yeah, that's just so it keeps this square thing and so that everything just stays inside the frame. Now, of course, for each one, I have a background color of uh, 0, or pretty much perfectly black, background transparency to 0 0.5. Uh, what do we else do we have? We also have the text for them accordingly. Uh, I chose a Gotham bold font, and the text is scaled. Uh, also, I should probably tell you the text color is white, and that's pretty much it. Nothing down here as well. But yeah, that's the basic GUI all finished up. Let's actually get into the scripting. Now, if you do want to, now I know this is very complicated, so if you do want to just copy this down right now and you think you know, you know, uh, input began key code or uh, getting mouse user input service, all of that, then you, I can leave, uh, then you can pause this video right now and you can see all of the functions and uh, I guess operations. But if you want to actually learn or you actually just want to see how I actually made this, this, this this work of code art, then I will show you right now. But uh, just for a brief overview, these two are over here for variables for easier use, so you can customize them easily. You don't have to edit each one. User input service and mouse slash just getting the functions. Right here, I'm just checking if each one is being hit. So, you know, else if, else if, else if. Same for it being pushed up. Then, of course, the same for buttons down here. But yeah, if you aren't that experienced and you aren't that big brain just yet, well, I'll just do this for you already. Now, of course, I will be keeping this just in case for reference, but um, I'm not sure if I will actually need it. So, of course, as I said in the start of this video, this tutorial is decently advanced, but hopefully I'll be able to explain everything. So yeah, let's just get straight into it. Now, the first two things I'm going to actually do is make variables, all right? Oh, sorry, button idle, just so that it doesn't um, interfere with anything else. And what these are going to be are um, color three values. And 
if you, if you can, I guess, already guess from the variable, these are going to be the values that basically um, these colors will be what the uh, background of these uh, boxes will be when they are pressed. So of course, when they are idle, I want them to be black just like this. So I'm going to keep it at 00, zero oh, not the script. Sorry. I'm going to keep this at 000, zero, zero because I want them to be completely black. Of course, you can see the preview right here, if you can see that. And of course, when they are pressed, I want them to become fully white. So of course, be, so um, you know, to do that, I'll just go 255, 255, and 255. Now, the reason why it's 255 is because it's based off of, uh, was it 16, some, something bit. But basically, the maximum value is 255. There are 256 values because zero counts as well. But yeah, so you can customize these however you like. So maybe you want um, them to be red when they're pressed. Well, in that case, just go 25500 and customize that however you want. So of course, these two, fully customizable. The rest of the GUIs, of course, if you have a little bit of experience in GUIs, you can always change that as well. <laughs> but yeah, after that, I'm going to be getting user input service. Now, what user input service is, is it basically just gets the keys that are being pressed by the player. So, sorry, I need to concentrate. I am tryharding in scripting right now, who knew? And of course, along with this, I will be uh, getting the mouse as well for the left and right um, buttons as well. Oh, wait. Dot local player dot oh, colon get mouse. So, I'm just going to quickly go over this so that you, everyone is following. These two, just uh, customization for colors. Uh, you, I'll be using these variables later, do not worry. User input service, I'm just getting the service user input service for easier use again. And of course, same thing for mouse. I'm just getting the player's mouse and all the functions that go into it. So yeah, now first I'm going to be covering the keys. All right, so this part, I guess. Now, as daunting as it looks, it is actually pretty simple when it comes down to it. So, yeah, let's get let's just get started. Now, I'm going to be just quickly writing something here. Do not worry if you don't get it. I will try to explain it once I finish. Connect function. Oh, put that input. Bam! All right. We also have let's go W first. All right. Now, if you don't know about user input service, this might look like rocket science to you, but of course, I'll go through it right now. So, what I'm saying here is user input service dot input began. What uh, input began is an event, as you can guess. And what this does is, let's say I press down, all right? I don't push it, you know, push it down and push it back up. No, I'm pressing down W, all right? Then input began, or this input right here, is going to be W, or key code W. So that's why, um, sorry, that leads me to here, which is, which is basically saying, if the uh, key that is pressed is W, then you know, do whatever's in here. The reason why I have key codes, honestly, we really don't know. And enum, it's basically just um, for checking things, because if I was just to do a string value w, that technically wouldn't work. So that's why there is, oh my god. That's why we have enum. It just makes a lot of things easier. <laughs> then, and of course, in here, we're going to be going to reference this WGUI right, oh, not that one, WGUI right here, and we're going to turn it to white. That, oh, that is why these this button idle, idle and button press is here, because we don't exactly want to change it to 000, zero, zero so that if you do change your mind about the color, you don't have to do it for every single one. So, without further ado, I'm just going to do so script.parent.w.backgroundcolor3 is equal to button pressed because this is when the button is being pressed so it is going to turn completely white as you can see here and of course you might be wondering well what about 
the other f uh, four keys, you know, A, S, D, and space. Well, that is why this looks like it's stacked, stacked up. That is because we, yes, we are going to be using copy and paste. Who knew? So, uh, just highlight everything right here. Do a little control C, <clears throat> drop a line, or press enter, control V. I'm going to do this until we have five. Also, I should probably, oh, and for the last else right here, you don't need that. So we just take that out. And I believe we add an end here as well. Perfect. So um, what this is going to be doing, we first um, just put all the other uh, keybinds. So W, A, S, D, you know, W here, A, switch that to A, switch this to S, switch this to D, sorry, D. And of course, for space, switch this to space and switch this to space. Now, if now, if this if space or D or S or whatever, let's say this D was lowercase. Okay, this is this isn't D. It's like this. All right. Well, in that case, you will have to reference it like a lowercase with a lowercase D, since I am referencing the GUI, or sorry, the text label. So if it wasn't if this was lowercase d and this was uppercase d, this wouldn't work out because it can't find a text label that's an uppercase d. Now, of course, this is, yeah, that's honestly pretty much it. If not, I can always uh, run through it right now. So let's say I press space, all right? Let's say I press space. So it's going to have input as space, and it's going to go through these five uh, commands right here. First, is it a w? Well, it's not a W, so it goes else, and it goes, is it an A? Well, it's not an A, it's a space. So it keeps going down. S, it's not a S. D, it's not a D. But then it finds space. Now, it is a space, which means then it will turn exactly button space, not W, not A, not S, not D, not these two buttons up here. No, it is going to change space to button pressed value, which is white. Long story short, it is going to change space, uh, space's background to white. And actually, that is pretty much it for input began. As you can see, they are literally the same. Now, of course, along with that, you may be wondering, well, what about when the button is pushed up, right? When the person stops pressing it? Well, in fact, we're actually going to do another control C, control V over here because everything here is actually very similar. I can explain. Now, the event for a button being unpressed or, you know, st stop being pressed is input ended. Not input began, but input ended. Now, the input is the same because, you know, there's a key being unpressed. So, of course, all of this here is pretty much the same other than button pressed. We, we don't want when the button is pressed up to continue to be white. No, we want it to change back to black in my, exa uh, in my case. So, what do we do here? That is where this button idle comes in. This is going to change it to completely black again. So instead of button pressed, we'll be typing button idle. Now, of course, do another little copy paste sort of magic. And you have yourself the keybinds or the main button keybinds pretty much finished. Now, I don't believe I will need this one since, of course, we are pretty far through and it might just get in the way. So, if you run the game, I'm going to take out this leaderboard right here. Now, let's say I'm going to move forward. W, bam, do you see? Uh, look at this, you can see. Whoa, whoa, it's showing what keys I'm pressing, wow. And of course, the reason why it's turning on and off is because we have input began and input ended. Let's say I, oh, sorry. Let's say I press space, for example, right? The reason why it's not turning on W or none of them is because when I start pressing space, it goes to the whole script and finds, oh, it presses space right here. Then, you know, it turns this white, as you can see right there. And of course, once it's finished being pressed, it changes it back to black or button idle, which is of course black. That is why it turns to black or white, depending on if I'm pressing it or not. And of course, if um, I know you can't see it, but I am pressing E and Q right now, and you can see that it is not doing anything. If I press I or O, 
you can see that by zooming, you can tell that I'm actually pressing it. You can see that it is actually not turning on any of them. The reason why? Well, it's checking for specific keys, right? I or O is not S, it's not D. No, S is S and D is D. I is I, O is O, right? Pretty, pretty good. Now, you may be wondering, well, we've done all WASD and space, but what about these two left and right buttons right here? Well, that is where mouse comes in, all right? We're going to be learning another, I guess, function, you could say. Now, for this one, uh, these commands are going to be very short, so I guess uh, just bear with me. Button one down, colon connect. Oh, not that. Function. Pop that with... Actually, I don't think we need anything here. Then, of course, in here, I'm going to do script dot parent. Now, because button one, all right, button one is the left button, all right, it's this one. The button two, button two down, would be right. So first, let's do sorry. First, let's do the left button, or in other words, button one. So we're going to do script dot parent dot left mouse button dot background color three equals what was it button pressed and of course if we do the same for down we'll have to do the same for up so do a little copy and paste magic once again and change this to button idle of course now we have button one all the way oh wait sorry before you actually copy and paste it remember to change this to button one up remember these are two different commands this one for when it's pressed and this one for when it's well, unpressed so, of course, because we have the button 1, or left mouse button, we'll also have to do the same for right. So, change these to 2, right over here, because we are using the right button now, not the left one. So, button 2 is right, so we do right. And, of course, RMB instead of uh, left mouse button. Of course, if you wanted to say left, if um, the text label is named, or, I don't know, left mouse button, or left, or right, or stuff like that, then, of course, remember to reference it accordingly like that. But yeah, um, this should also be pretty self-explanatory. If you don't know what happens here, all it's saying is when the left mouse button is pushed down, then change the left uh, the mouse button's background color to white. Of course, when, it's, when it stops being pressed, change it to black again. Same thing for the right buttons as well. And of course, if everything goes well, Let me change that out. You can see that on the top left, you can see that the left mouse buttons and right mouse buttons are working. You can see all the keybinds, they're dancing in their own respective colors. And of course, the reason why I'm clicking the left mouse button and it goes left, and I'm clicking the right mouse button and it's on the right, is because we gave them the air specific commands. If it was all just button one down, button one up, button one down, button one up, then it would only be the left mouse button. So yeah, um, that is uh, pretty much the tutorial. If you have any questions, of course, leave them down in the comments section below. Um, yeah, if you need any help as well. Now, in terms of um, adding more buttons to this GUI, that will be um, on you. Of course, this is just uh, the very basics. So I hope this uh, helped you in some way. Of course, without further ado, that is all for this video. Have fun scripting, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!